I'm going to share the no BS advice for 3,500 deals over my 21 approaching 22 year career and wholesaling. This could be a difficult conversation. So if you can't handle the truth, just shut it off right now because I'm going to go down the rabbit holes that nobody else is willing to go down. And I'm just going to like give you the truth. I don't think there's many other people qualified with 21 plus years of pure wholesaling that can just tell you the way it is. And the thing is, I don't have a course to sell you. I don't have a sales pitch to give you. So the only thing I can give you is the absolute truth of how this business is and the things you need to watch out for, the things you actually need to do and hold yourself accountable to become truly successful in wholesaling. So if you look, if you look over my shoulder here, guys, let me know in the comments. You know who the man is, the myth, the legend. That is Bruce Lee. And back in the 50s, actually the 60s, this man did what no other man was willing to do. He tested the limits on everything. The, the, the mental capacity of a human being. He tested the physical capacity. And the one thing that I love about Bruce Lee is the minute, and keep in mind, he's an immigrant that came to California to become an actor. He came much, much more than actor. He is the staple of for what a human being is capable of. Anybody who told this man behind me that it's impossible, he literally just destroyed it. He defies human logic. He is one of the special people that I really look up to because his feats of accomplishments were absolutely amazing. He didn't even speak one lick of English, came to the United States, not only had a successful acting career, which honestly he struggled with terribly for 10 plus years, but his physical capabilities, his disciplines, were absolutely unbelievable and he built an entire lifetime of doing it. And today, I'm gonna give you a little bit of the Bruce Lee crackdown, the smackdown that you need to, so you understand how to truly do this business and be successful. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, some of you are not gonna be happy with today's conversation because I'm just in one of these moods where I'm tired of all the crap being thrown around on the internet about just people in general of what the wholesaling industry is. And the problem is, you guys got to focus on actually finding and marketing and getting wholesaling deals as opposed to all these games and these tricks and this, this fake marketing. Let's just, let's get into it, man, because this is going to get interesting. So I would love to get your feedback on this stuff because this is important and tell me what I'm missing, but I'm going to go in no exact order. Once again, freewholesaling.com. If you want to figure out how to actually learn how to do wholesaling without all the hype, without all the BS and definitely without the swipe of the credit card because there is a paywall behind most gurus. That's why most gurus do not like me and Zach because we tell you the truth. And like the Wizard of the Oz, when you pull the shades back and you find out who's working the strings, you're going to be shocked. So if you guys want to get some truth today, you want to find out how to really be successful in wholesaling, I'm going to break it down for you. So let's first talk about what has wholesaling become? And what do I mean by that? What has wholesaling become? And th the reason I say that is simply this. Hold on, let me, let me, let's, let's update our color scheme so we can really, there we go. So what has wholesaling become? I would love to hear in your comments because when I started out in 2003, I'm telling you, none of this crap was around that you guys are being fed. You guys are being manipulated. You're being used. And you are paying gurus a ton of money for very little information for the slightest bit of hope. So you guys know there is a 95% failure rate working with a coach, mentor, or guru. That's fact. Nobody disputes that. Now, the question is, who do we blame? Do we blame the guru or do we blame the student? And it is always a combination of both to be fair on both sides. But for the most part is, you guys, a lot of the stuff that you're being pitched right now has nothing to do with wholesaling, but somehow it's magically being wrapped around the wholesaling language. This stuff was never, ever part of wholesaling. In fact, when I started, you would be laughed. You would be laughed out of the building if someone did something like this. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. And I'm not going to get, I'm not picking on anyone's programs, anything specifically. 
It's just the truth of where wholesaling is gone. So if you want to know why we have so many strange people in wholesaling, just look no further than the marketing because that's what it comes down to. Sexy marketing titles have little to do with wholesaling. Did you hear me? I only teach wholesaling. I am a wholesaler at heart. I understand the fundamentals of wholesaling. Guys, you're either going to get price, which is wholesaling, or you're going to get terms, which is creative financing. I focus on wholesaling. It's the number one core strategy you can learn to become effective in wholesaling. I'm sorry, in real estate. Without the fundamentals of learning how to wholesaling, you don't have a great skill set in real estate and you will always be dependent on others to find great deals for you. So number one, figure it out. Number two, understand these sexy marketing titles. It's ridiculous. Do you know 80% of the courses presented to you have nothing to do with wholesaling, but somehow we've wrapped it up in wholesaling. Do you want me to go down the list for you? I'm not going to go down the list for you. you guys. Put it in the comments. All this crap with these special contracts. I have a special contract that now gets around wholesaling. It's a bunch of balarkey. It's BS. It's all lied to you. The only reason you see these sexy marketing titles is one reason. Course sales. They, they create, they, they find what is the biggest problem. And then they come up with these incredible marketing titles, which I will give them all the credit in the world. Amazing. Here's the problem. They really don't have something that solves the problem. It just solves the itch for you to pay them. And then once you get behind the paywall, you find out there's really nothing there. You see, the problem is everyone's buying the marketing title, but nobody has a product that actually affects and fixes the problem. This is why you got a 95% failure rate. You guys buy into this crap. You think everything's going to be easy. Oh, this guy or gal says, if I just do this, this, and this, and I go on the MLS or I just pay full price for the property, I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat all the other wholesalers. Here's a newsflash. You're, you're just being tricked. You're being duped. It's a complete waste of time. And, and like, let's take, for examples, like, I'm just going to throw it out there. Let's take, hold on. You, I just look in the comments what you guys put out there. No, Novations is a, is a way that you can have best of both worlds. You can wholesale and get retail. Bull crap. First of all, Novation is, not a, is a, just a replacement of a contract. That's it. Novations did not include power of attorneys, limited or whatever you want to call. They did not rec uh, include recording a lien. They did not give you the power to put stuff on MLS without the homeowners, with the homeowners authority, however you want to do it. It is a culmination of four to five documents, but basically manipulates legal clarification and basically lets you take the place, act like a wholesaler. You think it got this little loophole. Let me let you in a little secret. Novations has actually ruined wholesaling, in my opinion. Most states are trying everything in their power to stop Novations because they are a disaster when they don't work out. At least a wholesaling deal, guys. Think about that. If it doesn't work out, you either cancel the contract, you renegotiate the contract, or you lose your deposit. That's it. It's done. It's black and white. Novations, try to unwind a novation. I got four deals in my pipeline right now from failed novations. We can't get the paperwork unwound because the wholesalers know where to be found because they're scared to death and they think hiding and ghosting, which is... I guess what their mentor taught them. I don't think they did. See, when you record something on public record, you have a responsibility to fix it if it doesn't go right. And that's the problem with Novations. Novations are so easily identified. I talked to an underwriter at one of the largest insurance companies that write the title policies, and here's what they look for, especially in the Southeast. Number one, they look carefully at the contract. They make sure there's only one legitimate contract. Number two, once they hear a contract's being substituted, they're going to red flag your file. And number three, they're going to look for a lien. If the lien is less than one year old, which most of these courses teach you how to record a lien like the day before your closing, they are not going to insure your title, which means you're not going to be able to sell it. And remember, this was the marketing sexy title that was going to beat wholesaling and work our way around it. If anything, it's actually made, it makes wholesalers look worse. And this is my perfect example. This is the BS we're dealing with in this business because you're being sold these sexy marketing titles 
And now Novations has got wrapped up in wholesaling and it has nothing to do with wholesaling. And here's how you guys are pitched. Here's how you know you're being worked. Why compete with wholesalers when you can do this? Guys, I can go down the horn on it. I love creative financing. I think it's one of the, the, the coolest strategy in the world, but you have to be educated and you have to understand the paperwork you're doing. So here's the problem is, creative financing is being sold to people, being marketed to why compete with wholesalers when you can just pay full price and you can, you can just take down properties. Do you really think that's a strategy to become rich in wholesaling? In, in real estate, not wholesaling. So now creative financing is tied up in wholesaling. I fully admit that creative financing is a strategy you should have in your wholesaling arsenal, but it takes time to understand it. Now, if you have a creative financing partner, like a real partner that's going to buy it with you, lead you and mentor you through it, knock your socks off. I'm all for it. But when you buy these one and done kits, you pay thousands of dollars and you just do all this paperwork and you don't understand why creative financing doesn't work for you. It's because you bought it because you thought it was going to replace wholesaling. And right now, as we speak, there is more pressure being put on creative financing, especially on the subject to deals because, and I love when people say, well, there's nothing the government can do about creative financing. Yes, to a point that is correct. Subject to, they can nail it right in the butt. Remember, 90% of mortgages are funded through Fannie and Freddie Mac. All they have to do is write into every mortgage that you cannot assume a loan and any change in title is a mandatory 100% due on sale clause. End of story. One, also, they're going to write some sort of derogatory legislation in there saying if you take over a property, take title, and you keep the existing debt with the customer is you're going to be breaking multiple offenses. Now, how they do it, I'm not a lawyer. I have no idea. But Fannie and Freddie have the power in one swipe of a pen to basically eliminate subject twos. Now, you could do it, but then you have to lie. And then you have to lie and you have to go on record and guess who's going to be held accountable. See, this is a perfect example of how we've tried to beat wholesaling with all these other techniques. I believe in creative financing. I just believe you need the right skill set and you need a high quality education and you need experience. So my problem with creative financing right now, it's being sold to would-be wholesalers that are struggling and going, hey, listen, you're tired of competing with wholesalers, AKA, let me give you the easy way to do this. And you're gonna find out in the, in the long run, it's actually the hardest way to do it. I love creative financing. I didn't do it till about two years in my career. That was just my journey. I'm not trying to tell you that's your replication of it. But I'm telling you, when you're going to take over subject twos and do creative financing and you have never done a real estate deal, I think it's dangerous and I think it's not responsible because I teach a lot of new wholesalers and we have to go through the experience and the journey and we have to teach them what is right and wrong. In creative financing, remember when you do it, the seller has no idea what your experience level is. And saying, I'm associated with this national person, I think you owe them more than that. And I'm just saying, so if you can get someone to hold your hand and take you all the way through and take ownership and they back it up with their finances, I'm fine with it. But if you're just going to be one of these people that wing it, use this cookie course cut stuff and it, what are you going to do if it falls apart? You're going to have problems with it. This is my problem, guys. Sexy marketing titles have nothing to do with wholesaling and it all leads us to this. You ready? It's the shiny object syndrome. Let's flash enough objects in front of them and maybe we can get their attention. Well, maybe you need to just take the Bruce Lee mentality behind me and go, I'm only going to focus on the core of what I do. This man focused on the core of basically Kung Fu, which is he, he is the grandfather of all mixed martial arts when it comes down to it. But he tested the physical limits of a human body. Go watch. He did almost all his stunts. He did everything and he tested everything but he only focused on the things he could absolutely control. And I'm telling you guys, my biggest challenge in wholesaling right now is you guys are being told about all these wholesaling things that have nothing to do with wholesaling. Guys, do you really think you, as a new wholesaler, you should go on MLS and look for a motivated seller? That's like going to an ostrich farm and looking for an alligator. You'll eventually find one, but you're going to go through thousands and thousands to do it. 
Guys, the reason this is all coming at you is because they're running out of crap to sell you. Number two, marketing titles sell. And once they sell, nobody cares. They just don't care. That's why we have such a massive failure rate. Why do you think there's, whatever, call them gurus, influencers. They've had like, I've watched people over my 20 plus years. I've watched them go through 30, 40, 50 iterations of their products. Why don't you just do like Bruce Lee does? If you really believe in what you do, stick to the core values of what you do and just do it to the best of your ability. But when you constantly have to keep shifting products, which means you just change the titles to it, it means you got to trick people over and over. And I'm tired of it. Please stop creating these flashy title products because as a wholesaler, you guys are all attracted to it because it seems like the perfect fit. I'm willing to tell you, if you're willing to put in the work and understand the core fundamentals of wholesaling and do the Bruce Lee way, you'll make it. It ain't going to be pretty in the first year or two. Do you think that guy's journey was any prettier? And if you understand the core of that, you can move forward with it. We got to stop this shiny object syndrome, guys. It's, it's coming at you at a rapid, rapid rate right now. We're going to go through it. But just stop. It's, I can't stop them. I can't call them all to the plate. It's exhausting. If you guys would stop buying that crap, they'll stop producing it. That's the bottom line. You vote with your money and you vote with your time. You better make sure you're putting it to the right places that's going to make you a better wholesaler. And I'm telling you, most shiny object syndrome is doing the complete opposite. Good Lord. I keep going on here. We're just warming up. Okay. So let's talk about the next thing. So if we know we're being massively, massively diverted and distracted, that's the, the, the key words distracted is, the fundamentals of wholesaling is the key. You know why you guys don't like this title? Because it's not sexy. It's the absolute truth. How many titles do you think Bruce Lee came up with? At the end of the day, he's like, just get it done. Just do it. And if you can't do it now, then put in the thousands of hours to master your craft. Why do you guys think you're any different in wholesaling? You're going to have to master the fundamentals because once you understand the fundamentals, it is just like football. I know, I, listen, I like football, but like we, we can go down wrestling too. If you can't learn how to block, if you can't learn how to, if you can't learn how to run a route, I don't care how great of an athlete you are. You're going to get your butt kicked. Florida State proved that last night. Supposed to be the number seven ranked team coming in, into, into the country in college football. The most top rated defensive linemen, they're all supposed to go to the NFL. And guess what? Georgia Tech and Boston College just, all they did was the fundamentals. Fundamentals. They were not sexy about it. They just, they run past block. They just, they do the basics. And at the end, they dominate in the scoreboard. So the problem is if you try to do all the fancy stuff and the end zone dances, and apparently FSU has been practicing that the entire time, you've got to do the fundamentals. Are you calling sellers? Are you focusing on the right type of motivated sellers? Are you doing the fundamentals? Nine times out of 10, when you guys tell me your problems, I always bring you back to the fundamentals of wholesaling. And I can quickly identify what your problem is just by listening how you're talking. Don't believe me? Let's go through the rest of this exercise. Fundamentals. It's not sexy. It doesn't sell. And that's all we promote at freewholesaling.com. If you want to learn the fundamentals and get the truth on how I've become so successful in wholesaling, how I've taught my son, and how I've taught thousands of others. And by the way, did you know freewholesaling.com is the most successful wholesaling course on the planet Bar none. I've never asked for a testimonial, which every guru tells you, you got to get a testimonial. You got to grab them while they're hot. You know why they do that? Because they want to use you like a wet rag. Guys, I've never, ever asked any of you for a testimonial. You know why? Because I've been in your position before. And at the end of the day, if do you want to know if you have raving fans that just go, man, Zach and Rick, they do exactly what they say. Or do you want someone that gets manipulated and then... If you don't believe me, go to any seminar. And at the end, there's a guy in the back. He's like, come on over here and do a recording. Everyone thinks it's so cool. You're being used like wet rags. They're, they're going to use you for infomercials. They don't care if you're successful or not. And most of you are just excited. There's no way you did a deal just going to a seminar. You talk about how this valuable information you got. Come on, guys. Don't buy into this crap. Stop recording this stuff. Fundamentals is where it's at. So if we're going to do the fundamentals, we have to talk about the core. 
the hardcore stuff, the stuff that none of the gurus will talk about. They're too busy out speaking to an agent or like, I, this seems super sexy. I'm talking to an agent. We might get a deal. They're not getting a deal. Most of that stuff is pre-set up and done. That's why you say my son do live cold calls. I have no problem doing them. It's just how the business works. Most of them suck. You get your teeth kicked in, but that's how you learn the business. Calling a real estate agent is, in my opinion, just a complete waste of time. And there's only one type of person that promotes you doing it as a newbie. And it's a guru. Why? Because they're going to give you the easy. And I've always told you, if it's easy up front, it will be brutally hard at the end. So which would you rather do? Let me give you an example. I used to wrestle in high school. I wasn't the greatest wrestler in the world, but I worked hard. And I was very inexperienced because I, I went, I didn't go until my junior year. And I remember going out and just kind of like, the coach like, again, you got to practice harder. You got to push yourself. And I remember going out on the mat and just getting my butt handed to me because you don't work hard enough in the practice. And from that moment on, I decided to spend every waking moment when I was in high school to commit to the sport. You know why? Because if I did the hard work up front, I suffered, I learned, I educated myself, I become stronger in the gym. I ran the five miles before practice. I, I controlled my cardio so I wouldn't wear out that I could dominate on the mat. But I had to be willing to do the hard stuff up front. And I'm telling you, to me, there's no better analogy to wholesaling than wrestling. Because if you will do the hard work and treat every moment like you're in front of a live seller, it will pay off for you. Do the hard work up front and the easy will come at the end. I'm going to teach you all through this. This is, this is my, my sounding board. But the problem is every course, everything you guys hear out there is, let me show you how easy it is. Come on in. We're going to flip 30 houses today. No, they're going to flip 30 students is what they're going to do. Listen, I'm all about anyone who supports wholesaling. But man, we got to start telling the people the truth. Because the reality is me and Zach tell you the truth. That's why we have so many successful people. Because we tell you it's hard up front. Listen, if I get 100 people that come to freewholesaling.com, I'm pretty sure 90 of them don't make it. Now, the reality is maybe those 90 people just thought it was going to be easy. Even though I told them it's going to be hard. And if you can accept your expectation, you're going to work your, your you know what off. Wholesaling is amazing. But most people come in with this ridiculous expectation. And I've never sold it like that. I've never believed in it. I left the entire coaching community in 2013, 14, because I thought it was a, a, a just a crap show. It's embarrassing what went on in there. People will sell their souls to the devil just to get a few bucks. And here's how I look at it. I was told doing free wholesaling.com means that you're going to get killed. You're going to get embarrassed. The gurus will never work with you. And guess what? I don't give a crap. You think Bruce Lee gave a crap when he did his own stunts? He goes, I'm going to defy. I'm going to defy what is possible and impossible. Everybody told him he was crazy. I am no different. I am. I am like borderline nuts. You guys know that in a good way in an ADHD way. I'm constantly finding the best way to do something. But the honest to God truth is you guys just got to be willing to put in the hard work. It's painful sometimes. It's extremely doable. But we, we all have this like we just have to stop pretending on how this works and that. Okay, let's keep going. So we talked about the core. There's four core things in, in wholesaling. It will never change. It will never change. Guys, people are doing cold call back in the 60s and the 70s. Where is it? I show you guys this book all the time. Where do I put it? Me and my son love this book. When people tell you they invented real estate, inv I invented innovations. I invented, I invented creative financing. I invented this strategy. I invented installment contracts. Bull crap. Here's a book for what? 1970. And you know what? Me and Zach have driven the price of this book up to like $300 because they told the truth. You ever want to borrow this book here in my area? You'll let me know. Uh, George Bockel is an amazing man because if you look on the back here, I, I mean, you look at these titles, it's unbelievable how to do creative financing, how to, how to get private money. It's, it's unreal, but somehow you guys all think that in the last seven years, all these people created this stuff. It's bull crap. Number one, 
You got to be very comfortable with cold calling. It's not required, but it is preferred, especially if you're broke. Just accept it. Number two, driving for dollars. Just go out and look for ugly houses. I had an incredible young lady on the West Coast, no wholesaling experience, three beautiful small children and a husband working hard and they're both working together. Went out, found a house in their neighborhood, connected with the homeowner, had no idea what she's doing. She took a leap of faith with freewholesaling.com with me and Zach. And we just let her walk through it and just said, you can do it. Just call the owner, ask him. We taught him how to make the right offer, which I'm going to go over in this thing, the go for no. And you know what? She walked away with a check for $76,000. I never took a dime from her. She did join Flip with Rick Plus because she wants to do more of them. But I'm just telling you guys, everything I teach is 100% for free. If you guys want to get more of me and Zach, flipwithrickplus.com, you can check it out there. But guys, it's it comes down to you doing the core things. She got that off driving for dollars. Government list. If you want the details on the government list, go to freewholesaling.com. It's, it's a long multitude of lists. Why do we like them? Not because they're free. That's whatever you go with. Oh, they do it because it's free. They're cheap. No, they're the best motivated list. Not everything's always about money, guys, at the end of the day. And the last one's going to be paid list using like X leads, prop stream, stuff like that. There is value in it. I'd rather you use a paid list than uh, hire an employee, especially when you're starting out in wholesaling. So guys, the four, the four core fundamentals of wholesaling, if you're avoiding any of these four things, I promise you, you're probably struggling in your business. And if you're not doing cold calling, tell me you're doing reverse driving for dollars. Do tell me something is filling in that void. That's what you need to understand. So moving forward, we have to understand is who is your avatar seller for wholesaling? Because if you don't understand this part, there's no way you become a good wholesaler. You think Bruce Lee did figured out what? Do you think his fundamental gift he brought to America was being an actor? Absolutely not. He was constantly portrayed, stereotyped, and he had to demonstrate through his ability that he was a special and unique person. And it is no different for you in wholesaling. L listen to me. You have to be special and unique. God did not make two of the exact same people, at least that I know of. God, if he did, it'd be so much easier. The reality is, guys, you have to understand this. Who is your avatar? Who is your avatar for wholesaling? And if you don't understand this part, don't even do wholesaling. And nine times out of 10, I would contribute 60% of the failure in wholesaling to this exact thing right here. You don't understand what you're looking for. You all go, I'm just looking for a good house deal. The hell does that mean? What kind of BS is that? If you don't ask the right questions, you are not going to get it. So you have to understand. So when it comes to this, who is your avatar? A lot of you go, I'm just looking for distressed property. No, you're, you're, you got to go deeper than this. That's why we teach you about the four course freewholesaling.com. So who, who is your avatar? Number one, you're looking for a motivated seller. Here's the problem is nobody knows what a motivated seller is. And this is where all the marketing, the influencers trick you. So for example, do you think there's, do you think there is a large number of motivated sellers on MLS? Yes or no? Put it in the comments. I already know the answer to guys. I, the only time I spent MLS was 2010 to 2012. Why? It was easy. But here's the, here's the truth. I still got much better deals going off market direct to seller. Now, I didn't mean I couldn't do deals on MLS. That, in my opinion, was a once in a lifetime type of thing to do. Remember, when you when you go on MLS, you're, you're going to have somebody that runs interference. It's called a realtor. You're, you're never going to get the truth from. Them. You're never going to talk to the homeowner. And these properties are openly bidded. So there's always an idiot willing to overpay what you're going to do. Don't be that idiot. So once you understand that, you know that. So that the problem is you guys get so pissed off and frustrated trying to chase down people that are not motivated and you come crying to me and Zach, oh, I can't make this business work. You're looking in the wrong places. You don't know what you're looking for. So if your avatar is, you've got to know what your ideal customer is. My question to you is, do you know what your ideal seller, what do they look like? I've already told you what list they're on. You already know the truth on that. So we look for motivated sellers. Guys, here's the simple, simple, simple math on this. It's so fundamentally simple. 
I'm going to break it down for you. Ready? Want versus needs to sell. That's all you got to ask yourself when you're dealing with a seller. Now, occasionally somebody that wants to sell will give you a good deal on it. Occasionally, but rarely. Do you understand that? So if I'm brand new to wholesaling, I just jumped in freewholesaling.com. I'm watching this guy, Rick. He's got ADHD. He's all over the freaking place. He's got good energy, though. I, I, listen to me. Find people that need to sell their house. I've got a pending foreclosure. I lost my job. I took over this house from probate. Grandma died. I don't want to carry on with this house. The landlord's trashed the house. I got to do this painful eviction. <clears throat> I want nothing to do with it. I want to move on with my life. These are all people who bought in the vision that real estate was going to be easy. Remember what I said, easy? Now, those people, that's where I spend all my energy on. The other side of the coin is the people that want to sell. This is where you guys are being completely duped. I have yet to see one guru, one influencer do a live, I, and let me repeat the word, live phone call to a real estate agent and take a deal down. All edited, all pre-recorded. Why? Because it's rare. It's extremely rare. There should be a disclaimer on the bottom of the screen saying, this will be such a rare event, you'll never hear it going down again. And I would want affidavits signed from the broker and the wholesaler saying they've never spoke before. The odds of making one phone call and taking a deal down with MLS are slim to none. Now, for to be fair, though, it's the same thing when you're direct to seller. These things take time to work out. But if it was so easy and so predominant, they should be all over the internet and you guys don't see one of them. I can't stress the word live enough to you. So here's the problem is, you guys, the want versus need, here's where the challenge is. Remember we talked about early is, what, what, how do I sell things? Well, we go to shiny object syndromes. How do we do it? We do it with sexiting marketing titles. You know what sounds super sexy? If I have you go to the MLS, you never have to deal with the wholesaler garbage. They'll give you the price. There's pictures on there. And then you just get a price slight discount and you sell it for more. Boy, they left out a huge chunk of the fundamentals of wholesaling. Do you understand why that doesn't work? Because the problem is you're going to chase down people that want to sell their house. And here's what's going to happen. It's going to seem super easy up front. Oh my God, I've, I've discovered gold. It's the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. It, the phone number's there. The price is there. This is, this is like taking candy from a baby. And you get it under contract. And then whoever taught you just high fives you. Woo, you got it under contract. You're celebrating. You know why? You just got duped because you got instant gratification. Now, occasionally, I'm sure somebody hits somewhere, but I promise you, you put a hundred of these under contract, dude, 95 would be an impressive closing rate, like 95% failure rate. I would be impressed. With. I think it's closer to 98, 99, because you're going to find out your easy is going to turn to almost impossible. You have a most part, maybe you have an assignable contract. Did you get over the uh, proof of funds? Probably not. And did you get over the earnest money deposit? Probably not. And then how are you going to drag your, your, your cash buyers through there? How are you going to navigate around the realtor? It's, and then, so you can either take a, a path of lying, which I strongly advise against, or why don't you just join us and go and find people that need to sell their house? As well. Just because somebody puts a house on the market does not make it a potential wholesale deal. Guys, this is not a car dealership. That's why I tell you, there's no sales training in wholesaling. That's another myth that I'll go over with you on that. The reality is, I get all worked up. I got to calm down. The, the, the reality is, guys, is you're being sold a lot of crap. And it is so much easier to sell, to find people that want to sell their house because they're going to get their money, their course fees up front. And then you're going to be left frustrated three to six months down the road. I saw an advertisement today before I came on here. I mean, it started at $400. It's at $297. It went down to $197. Then it's $97. And today I saw it for like $29. They're going to teach you how to negotiate any wholesaling deal in under four weeks on a, re on a recorded training. Guys, please, please tell me you're smarter than this. Please, my God. You guys, it, listen, the, the gift wholesalers have is their ability to market. Your entire lives, you've been told in wholesaling that it's your gift to sell. It's not. Our gift is marketing. And these people are using it against you. I used to be one of them, but I never believed in it. 
Why? Because I go, if a product has a 90 some odd percent failure ratio, you might as well just do MLM. I got nothing against MLM. It is not my cup of tea. I believe if products were going to sell on their own, they would just sell on their own on the store shelves. So I'm not against MLM. I just, I don't believe in it. Ask me how I know. Okay. So let's keep going here. So want versus need to sell. If you guys just focus on people that need to sell by following the core four areas that we teach in freewholesaling.com to look for the list where there's going to be the highest motivation, you'll stop wasting your time. The reason why you're presented with all that stuff, because it sounds super easy. Whatever is easy up front. When I started out football, I started out as a nose tackle. I used to be a much bigger guy. And I remember my senior year ago and the coach said, again, when they let you through the line, be very, very cautious. So football, everything's tactical. So a guard would pull, there'd be a big gap and I'd see the quarterback and I'm like, and then next thing I know, I got smelling salts and I'm being dragged off the field because I got scraped by a pulling tackle or guard. And I, I literally get knocked out and I fell right into their trap. And then the coach taught me, he goes, again, when you feel that pressure, lean in, it's coming. And so once you got in, instead of just running the quarterback, you would lean in, fight off the blocker, then go to the quarterback. You guys are going to have to do the same thing. It, it, if it's this easy, you've got to understand there is a, it's going to be brutally hard. I'm going to teach you how to do the hard way up front, get the discipline, get it, get it out of the way and set your expectations. And then when you go to find a cash buyer for your contract, it's going to be brutally easy. That's it. Which do you want to do? You want to be fooled? You want to lie to yourself? Or do you just want to dive in and do the hard work now? This is the problem that's going on in wholesaling. We're all looking for the easy way out. We need to, guys, a big core thing of fixing this country is we have to accept and embrace doing the suck. Because getting easy is not getting you guys by. I, a lot of you on here are struggling, and I know why. You're confused as hell. Take the Bruce Lee mentality. Stick to the core fundamentals and become incredible at them then you can add little bits to improve your game on it. Good Lord. I have, I'm not even halfway through this thing yet. So, okay, let's bounce around. Let's, let's do the next one. So guys, this, this is my life advice over approaching 22 years wholesaling. And I'm telling you, either learn from my wisdom, call it what you want, or you can suffer in your own head and your own mistakes and just repeat the stuff I did. I'm going to give you the number one killer in wholesaling other than a guru's filling you with a bunch of BS courses. You ready? I got to teach you to be an ego killer. Do you understand how, I, if you really wrap your head around it, and I'm, I'm not getting religious on you here or anything, but what the hell is the purpose of an ego? To me, ego is a flaw of the human being. It's, it's, it's failed me most of my life. Guys, put the definitions what you think ego is because I'm going to give you an eye-opening definition here. And once you understand it, and you understand the purpose of your ego, you will learn to do exactly what I'm showing you. Be an ego killer. Your egos are going, if you don't kill your ego, your ego's going to kill you. I promise you this. I watch more wholesalers go down with their egos than ever. Don't even get me started on influencers. Nobody can admit when they're right or wrong anymore. Everyone has to be right. And listen, I've been wrong plenty of times, but I learned as a young wholesaler I got humbled quickly and I learned me trying to always be right is just literally a waste of my time. You know why? Because it doesn't work. So let's get through it. This is, this is awesome right here. So Gabe says it's a protection. He's 100% right. Who's it a protection for? You or me? Victor says ego equals delusion. Just depends on what, like, I, I agree. So some of the definitions, if you guys want to look up the definition of ego, it is your perception or test of reality. And we all know those people that just like, are you on this planet or not? Like I, your, your, your perception's crazy. It is somewhat of their self-belief. Now I've seen ego go so far over that you can't even work with some people. Self-assessment. Tom's got a great one here. Separation of the, of the self, false identity that disconnects us from the wholeness of humanity. Michelle says it's the cash buyer I'm having a problem with. And guys, these are all perfect examples of what the ego is. And I'm telling you right now, I'm talking to you and only you. You can only be responsible for your own ego. So kill it now. I promise you, not only is it killing you in wholesaling, it's killing your relationships with your kids, 
your wife, your husband, your siblings, your mother, your father, and all down the family tree, you know, cousins. Stop trying to win every argument. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, all you really have is the people that you love and everybody you want to be around. And it's not going to be there forever. So why are we spending so much time trying to be right? I get it. If we're trying to get a business deal, we do have to have facts. Facts. But the problem is everybody wants to be right. So here is the best. I analyze the crap out of this stuff because I, I've, the more I look at it, the ego is your flawed programming, bouncing between unconscious and conscious decisions. It is your ability to feel important, to feel right, and feel valued. And the problem with the ego, it's all about what? Instant gratification. I need instant gratification. No, you don't. Do you think Bruce Lee got instant gratification? by Dude, the man does like a push-up on two fingers. That's it. Do you know how hard that is to do? Do you know how many thousands of hours of practice it takes? Perfect dieting, perfect nutrition, and making your body suffer to do that? He had to kill his ego to do it, okay? You have to understand how the ego works. I I'm telling you guys, it's, it's pain. the ego is painful. Here it is, ready? Your ego is your self-preservation at any cost necessary. And ego is always right. It can never be wrong. And I watch people double down on this all the time. Don't believe me? I promise you, you guys are dealing with people with such big egos, you can't even do business with them. Don't become that person. Prevent that up front. And you have to understand that your ego is what is going to kill you in wholesaling. If you don't believe me, just go on the internet, look at everyone who talks about wholesaling. They're all 100% right. Now, listen, I only show you from leading by example. I don't tell you to do something that I don't do myself. And the problem on the internet is a lot of it is just all ego driven. If you don't believe me, guys, think about this. What is all the crap? Like if you go on a wholesaling show, what do you expect to hear about? Wholesaling, right? But I go on wholesaling shows with the word wholesaling in it. And I hear about how, here's how you invest in this. And this is what you do when you get to this level. And like, they forgot about you. Me and Zach, don't forget about you. We, I always look at the core. I'm Bruce Leeing it in wholesaling. I am going to wax on, wax off. I know that's not Bruce Lee. And I do apologize. But you have to learn the core fundamentals of wholesaling to move on. And if you don't kill your ego, you're going to just constantly going to be right based on your old personality and it's going to make you wrong. So try this as a practice. Let your spouse, let your kids win an argument. As long as they're not risking anything like physically or financially, let them win. And you'll find you don't need to be right all the time. So you're going to find out you get back so much peace in your mind, so much energy. Guys, I meditate this on a daily basis and you have to understand the ego is a very flawed program in your mind and you got to recognize when it's taking it over. Whenever it wants to be right, whenever it wants to preserve you, protect you, and it will do it at any cost, at a lie, at a ill fact, anything like that. And you have to stop because it makes you feel good in the short term and it will destroy you in the long term. I have people I just can't even deal with because their ego is so big. And if you tell them your ego is so big, it gets bigger. It's the weirdest thing. So I think that's everything is, is on the ego here. A, a very, very powerful, but I can instantly tell when someone goes online, when I talk to people, I can tell <clears throat> I always size up their ego right away. If their ego is too big, I don't even want to work with them because we're never going to get anywhere. Because if you're already in a mindset where you have to be right at any cost, why should we even have a discussion? You've already made up your mind. Ego does not allow you to learn. It does not allow you to grow. It just tries to protect you. It's like you're trying to hoard everything and it's terrible. So next one, wholesaling is not a sales game. Let me repeat this. Wholesaling is not a sales game. I will debate anybody on this. And by the way, there's plenty of people who have an incomplete sales training programs. They, they own sales training courses. Listen, sales training is important. If you want to go into a car dealership, buy a car, I'm all about the sales training program. It doesn't work at all, Sally. Let me prove it to you. If uh, you have to be an expert marketer, that's what, that is the exception. You have to be an incredible marketer. So let me ask you this. If you're a car salesman, do you have to be a trained sales professional or a marketer? For the most part, they have to start out being a sales professional and then the better ones pick up marketing to expand their brand to get more customers. Now in wholesaling, you could be the best 
salesperson in the world. By the way, I came from a sales background. I was always good at sales, but I hated working for corporate America. I quickly found out that my sales training was of zero ability for me in wholesaling, other than I didn't mind talking to people. That was the only benefit. I had to learn marketing just like the rest of you. I actually had to become a mastered ninja marketing expert, just like Mr. Bruce Lee back there. And I had to be willing to take a lot of bumps and bruises on my chin to get through it. I will tell you this. If you think you can take someone's sales training and master wholesaling, the people that go to freewholesaling.com will crush you. You have to be a master marketer. Guys, this is the number one trait that all the influencers use against you. And rightfully so to a point, but what turns from good turns to bad, meaning they're just relabeling old courses. Like it, it, it's crazy because people keep buying it. So if you understand is you have to master marketing, not sales. Because if I get 100 prospects, sales training is designed to try to close 100 of them. In wholesaling, I have to use my specialty marketing tactics to find three to five people in that 100 bunch pile and then I just qualify them and I'm on a guide. You see, if I don't spend my effort on the marketing, the sales training is a waste of my time. I'm not gonna close 100, but all sales training is designed to have incredible closing ratios. It's ridiculous, think about it. If you do wholesaling correctly, the way we teach it for you wholesaling that time, we teach you how to market, and that is the specialty skill. Once you get a motivated seller in front of you that needs to sell, you simply walk them through our MCTP, which is our acronym for qualifying and disqualifying your prospects. And then your job is to just keep them on the yellow brick road. When they go off, you bring them back on. That's it. And we have every technique in the world that show you how to do that. I can sit here and give you sales training all day long. It's not going to help you because the reality is you're never going to make somebody sell your house. We're looking for people that need to sell their house and we are kind of like the pawn shop of real estate. But most of the courses you guys are buying now are trying to teach you how to avoid wholesaling so you can make it easier. And it it's, drives me nuts. So does everybody understand that? Does anybody disagree with me? Because I'm willing to debate this with anybody. You are never going to make someone sell you a house. I don't have a magic word to go. If you use this line, you'll close them every time. Now in a car dealership, Listen, when you guys buy a car, nine times out of 10, it's a want. It's not a need, period. And that's the difference. If you understand it, you get it. Okay, let's keep moving on. No one's ever been successful in wholesaling that didn't put in the thousand hour rule. How many hours do you think Bruce Lee put into his craft? The man put in hundreds of thousands of hours. I don't even know how the math would work out on that, but he was so disciplined. And by the way, the other thing you guys want to understand about Bruce Lee, he did this when he was dead broke living in the back of a kitchen on, on a, on a, just a, just a, a potato bag. Do you understand that? Like he dedicated so much to his craft. He didn't even care if he went broke and he was broke for a majority of his life, but he had such a superior skill set that he was so unique. Nobody else could duplicate what he did. He became an icon and rightfully so he probably should have got a stunt double, but that's a, that's another story. We won't go over that. So what's stopping you from a thousand hours? Guys, a thousand hours is nothing. And most of the time me and Zach just say, listen, get in a hundred hours, get in a hundred hours in wholesaling and let's make a change in your life. And if you can do that, we can massively, massively help with it. And I want you to understand that. So here's the next problem, which I know I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers because I, I know gurus like to watch the, our videos and I appreciate it by the way, because I don't really watch any of yours because the only person I worry about is you, the wholesaler. If I worried about what every guru thought about me and Zach, I wouldn't be on the air. In fact, I was told before I did freewholesaling.com, it would fail, you would suffer, don't go against the grain, you can't outmuscle us, one day you're gonna need me, I don't need you. You see, because I'm willing to take risks, that's what wholesaling is really about. And if I'm willing to take a risk and go against the grain because I make plenty of money wholesaling, I'm not gonna sell courses. I think selling courses is the shortcut. And show me someone who sold courses over a 20 year period that's still even slightly relevant today. I'm waiting, put it in the comments because here's what happens. You, you wind up cannibalizing your sales because after a while, nobody really believes in your product. It always starts out as something good and then it goes downhill. You know why? Because you did the easy up front. 
Now, I got nothing. You want to sell a course, people want to buy it, knock yourself out. We, we live in America and we'll talk about that. But I'm just telling you is, what if you actually built up a brand, taught people for free, showed value in your education by showing thousands of people getting deals done that literally have no money in their life, and then as a good face gesture, offer to partner with them because your skill set's so high, and then do JV deals all across the country. Oh, but that takes sacrifice. Most people come in a course, they get in the wholesaling and they want to sell it right away. Why? Because you have idiots out there trying to sell the coaches of the coaches and they're making a ton of money off you guys, 10, 20, 30 grand, and they don't care. And they're just teaching people how to get high end jobs. Guys, one on one coaching, it, it's, I'm sorry, it's just a job. Challenge me on this one on one coaching, especially in wholesaling, land buying, any of that. It is a job. You have a glorified job. Congratulations. Someone taught you how to get even more busier. Yeah, you'll have some more money, but you can't like, well, how are you going to get financially free? Because the fulfillment of all these coaching one-on-ones is going to kill you. Why? Because I've sat in a room with all these gurus and all they do is bitch and moan about how exhaustive people are. It's one of the, I, I, I don't do it because it doesn't work. If I thought it worked, I would do it. I don't have enough time in the day to do it between my, all my businesses and everything I do. So why do people keep doing it? It's just a constant money grab. Let me teach you how to become rich overnight. Listen, I'm all about the American dream, which we're going to talk about, but you've got to understand if you're selling your time, you are doing nothing more than what corporate America does. And we all hate that. So please be aware if you want to be a coach, why don't you take like the Alex Hermosi approach why don't you take the Gary Vanderchuk approach and actually help people out and help the masses out? Let me ask you this. Do you think Google sold their products overnight? No, they built up an incredible following and then they slowly brought things into it. But the problem, you're in a society where everybody wants to get paid instantly. And I'm all about getting you paid, but in wholesaling, you are going to have to make a sacrifice. And without the sacrifice, without the pain, you are getting nowhere. And this is the problem. If you guys are following gurus that sell coaching courses one-on-one, -on -one, you're part of the problem because they're selling their own time, but they're telling you, you can't sell your time. You're never going to get ahead in life. So why would you follow advice from someone like that? Drives me nuts. Which leads us to the next thing, which is, which is what's freezing you all up right now is selling the fear of wholesaling. It's going to be illegal. Listen, is there pressure on wholesaling through different legislation? Yes. I don't even deny that. Zach doesn't deny that. But it's never going to be completely out banned. There's so many ways to skin a cat. It's ridiculous. I'll always, we'll always stay ahead of the government. Remember, government is paid by taxpayers' money. It's slow, it's monotonous, and it is not efficient. So understanding, number one, read your laws. Stop saying, I heard or so-and-so influencer said, read the law. There's a reason most of you are getting spun. Number one, fear sells. And so remember, they're marketing experts. So it's easier to sell you fear than to sell you the truth. There's always two sides to a story. The problem with the media is they only ever give you one side and you got to understand that. So the people selling you the fear, guess who has the solution? Guess who? Oh my God, they have it. I saw this the other day is instead of, because wholesaling is basically illegal in most states, we'll go ahead and we'll fund your deals. Okay, great. That's the solution. And here's the caveat. They get their points up front, two to four points. You don't have to pay an interest rate. You get 90 days. After 90 days, they get the property back. And if you're successful in 90 days, you pay a 25 to 35% portion of your proceeds to them. Guys, if you're going to do that, just go out and get hard money. You get one year to figure it out. If you are new to this business and you try to do a whole tail in under 90 days, you are at massive risk. You are being taken advantage of. I'm sorry. It's the truth. A newbie should not be doing a wholesale deal with one of these funding programs. Go get a hard money lender. You're going to say, you're still going to pay the points. You're going to pay the interest rate, but you are hundred percent in control. Having a 90 day restriction is fully taking advantage of you because most of you are going to fail. Sorry guys. Sometimes it takes six months to sell a property. That's why we are big fans of wholesaling because remember, once you go outside of wholesaling, Wholesaling is an element of wholesaling, but it is for the experienced, not the rookie. And all these gurus and stuff want to sell you the cure. They got affiliate programs. Everyone's getting paid off of it. it is the new gold. Remember, it is the shiny object syndrome. 
You are the product and you're going to get flipped. Guys, if you truly want to do that strategy, make sure you know what you're doing. And number two, go get a regular hard money lender and they'll tell you if the deal is good or not. Most gurus just want to get the fees and the funding on it. It's not their money. They get a kickback on all of it. And that's why you're being sold it. If I thought it was a solution, I'd promote it myself, but I don't understand the advantage of using a funding program that you only get 90 days and you got to give up 25 to 30% of your profit. You would be better off straight up on a hard money deal. Okay, we're wrapping up here and we're going to take questions. So guys, I, I, I can't stress this to you enough. Nobody cares about your struggles. I, I know that's terrible. It is a punch in the gut. It's the absolute truth. Nobody cares. I'm just, listen, your mom cares. Don't get me wrong. Mom always cares. Mom is like the super, super person in your life. But past that, the truth is not many people care. And the people that you think that care, they're just hearing you out. And they're being polite. It's the truth. You know why? Because when people have struggles, what's the, what's the one thing coming behind it? You, get, you got a choice. You either bite down on your struggle and figure it out and, and get discipline or you go to the excuse train. And let's talk about the excuse. Excuses are your, are your ego coming out. I missed the R in there, so I'm never going to give you grammar lessons. Excuses are your ego coming out. Nobody gives a crap about an excuse. Honestly, the more excuses someone gives me, the more I know they don't care. Remember, your validation of your ego telling you you're right. So why do you think the minute you start broadcasting your excuses, it's painful and nobody wants to hear it. And you've got to understand that if you do that, it's going to be stuck. So you want to understand how that goes. Guys, I'm going to put the free wholesaling course. If you want to go into detail and learn how, how to actually do wholesaling correct, this is, this is my cure. And keep in mind, I did not invent the problem. I'm just going to give you the cure to it. So, okay, let's go into, let, so let's, this gets really good now. Next one. Wholesaling is getting harder. Deal with it. It's the truth. Everyone wants to lie to you and tell you a course and show you how to work around wholesaling. How could you just dive in and embrace it? The more you avoid something, the worse it becomes. And the more you try to go around it, the bigger the obstacle becomes. So as Ryan Holiday says, the obstacle is the way through it. Just go through it. Stop being so scared of wholesaling. It's not going to hurt you. I was told 2003, oh, wholesaling, it's brutal, Rick. You don't want to do it. You have no idea you're going to get killed. I didn't care. I set my expectation low. I go, man, I'm going to kill myself doing this. And I almost did. But here I am 21 years later, and I'm still doing it. Do you understand the difference in it? Wholesaling is getting harder. There's more people coming into it. Right now, we have this, this advent of TikTok where we attract people on a seven-second ad and they're out there chasing people on how to get wholesale deals. Now, most of these people are going to gravitate towards ridiculous strategies that won't work. That's why you got all these people chasing product, products down on MLS. Not, TikTokers go on MLS all day long, and a lot of the gurus are still teaching this. I'm not saying you can't get a deal on it, but if they get 10,000 people out there hunting on MLS, they'll find a few deals and maybe get a few bucks on it. God bless you on it. Wholesaling is getting harder. More people are coming into it. But here's the good news is most people are just skimming the surface. Nobody wants to go deep. If you want to go deep and learn the fundamentals of wholesaling, you will outshine and just kick all these people's butts hands down. Most people are very shallow when it comes to wholesaling. They don't want to dig in and learn how to do the business. And if you understand this, you go, okay, Rick, <clears throat> there's a crap load of people coming in the wholesaling, these TikTok revolutions going on. But if you want to learn how to go deep, go to freewholesaling.com. I will teach you, Zach will teach you the fundamentals of wholesaling and how to crush these people because it's not competition. They're mostly just hobbyists. They have a dream, but they have no idea how to figure it out. I actually have a plan for you if you want to do it. And the deal is I don't even charge you for it. It's crazy. You have a great American opportunity to become rich. You guys realize outside of the United States, it is a nightmare. Most people are just trying to get a bowl of rice to survive for the day. They're, avo they're avoiding like just ridiculous heat, cold temperatures, lack of food, lack of government help. And you're in the United States of America. And what are you complaining about today? Listen, I'm telling you right now, if you woke up, it's a miracle. I'm sorry. It's the truth. If you don't live every day like it's a gift, there's a saying called memento more. 
And it, it basically says, it comes from the, from the Greek Stoics saying, live today like it's your last day. Would you do something different if you knew today was your last day? The, the truth is none of us know that for sure. So why do you act like every day, other day is promised? You've got to learn to be present right now. Get in your wholesaling business and dig in there. Stop worrying so much about the future. Go make your phone calls today. Just lose it. Memento more. Live like today's your last day on the earth. If you lived every day like that, how much would your life change? I know it's a little bit morbid to think about it, but like we are only on this earth for a short amount of time. And if you're not taking advantage of the time being present right now, you are missing the gift called being present. Get it? Present gift works. Guys, there's out there's people outside this country and all sorts of continents kicking your butt and wholesaling. You know why? Because they'll do anything just to get a few dollars for their family. And I'm telling you, you have all the opportunity in the world in front of America. We got issues in America. Don't get me wrong. I'm not getting into politics, but we are a free capitalist society to a point. Take it while it's here. I don't know where we're going to be in the future, but it's here right now. Right now, you can go out wholesaling as much as people tell you, oh, you can't do it. I'm telling you, it is tangible. You can take it, run with it. I'm telling you, it works really, really well. And you have to understand how to do that. So let's move on. This one, this one's painful. I'm sorry. I'm just going to put it out there. Life's not fair. Do you ever have someone goes, life's not fair. Dude, it's life. I, I, I can't emphasize this enough to you. It's not fair. People got hit by cars all the day. People die of a ridiculous disease. Okay, I recently lost my sister. I'm in shock still. You think that's fair? It's bullshit. And I'm telling you, take advantage of the time you have right now. Life is not fair, but you can control what's within your head. Stuff's going to happen to you that's going to be so wrong. The question is, how do you deal with it and how do you move forward? Saying life is not fair is just your excuse train rolling along, letting people know that, Hey, it's not fair. If you're taking your mother's phone call for granted, stop it. She's not going to be here forever. Stop. Like she loves you. Just pick up the phone and talk to her. I wish I could do it. I can't do it. I'm just telling you guys what you think is just always going to be here. It's not. And life is short. I love to use wholesaling to take care of my family. That's it. That's why I do it. I do love talking to people as I've shown you, but life's not fair. If you can't embrace this part, you have no business like telling other people what to do. Life's not fair. I agree. It sucks, but we're going to make the best of what we have. And if we know it's not fair, I'm going to stack the odds so far in my favor. It's going to get extreme. So the time I can be present and here with my family, I'm going to take care of them. Now, money's not going to make me happy, but it's going to give me things that will make my family happy and it'll give, it'll allow me to buy back some of my time. Happiness is a choice. It's all within you. Happiness can't be bought. So they say they can't. It really, I, some of the wealthiest people are miserable. Next one. Only people below you will attack you. You're never going to get it from the top down. Only people coming under you attack. Guys, every time somebody goes on the internet, especially an influencer and talks about me and Zach, I, I love it when they say the father son team in Florida, because it's pretty obvious is like, why? Like, why are you giving me airtime? Actually, I love it. I will right now, I'll give you an endorsement. Any guru wants to go out there and talk about me and Zach, the more you talk about us, the more popular you make us. I love how people ignore like me and Zach don't even exist. That's even more of a compliment to me. The reality, guys, is only people below you that are feel threatened will attack you. And once you know that, it's so easy to sit back and watch it. I do not correct people. I do not go on and put comments. This is bull and just embrace it. Like everybody's got a right to their, their, their opinion, just like I do, just like you do. I'm not going to stop. I don't argue with people. I never argue. What, what's the point? You're not going to get anywhere with it. I purposely, I do not go online and I do not go back and forth with comments. It's a waste of time. I don't know who I'm arguing with. Next one. This is going to be a big one, guys. This, this one, this could hurt a little bit. It's just the truth. Avoid coaches, personal financial rules, it's rampant on the internet when someone say they become successful in wholesaling and then they're going to tell you they're going to do this. They're going to tell you how to pay your taxes, how you need to donate to a certain charity, how you need to structure your investments. Are you, are you crapping me out here? Like seriously, once again, I'm only going to talk to you about wholesaling. Do I have preferred methods for investing? I do, 
but I'm somewhat of a hobbyist, just like the rest of the people. Then you got people over there se selling, trying to sell NFTs. They're trying to like get you to do crypto and they're just, they're trying to stay relevant. And the problem is they need to stay relevant in wholesaling. And the minute they go outside of wholesaling, heed their warning. Why, why are they going to tell you, let me, here's the truth. I'm all about helping tithing and donating to people. But if you're dead broke, use the old philosophy like they do on an airline. Put your oxygen mask on first, meaning you need to learn to breathe and survive so you can take care of the people that you love the most. But if you're dead broke, in over your head on credit card debt, and you're told to give 10 to 20% of your money to a charity, are you absolutely kidding me? Seriously, put on your oxygen mask, figure out wholesaling if that's the route you want to do, and then give a ton back. And then if a coach wants to tell you how to do it, they need to go set up their own 501c3 like they should and donate publicly to show what they give out. Stop telling others how to do it. It's Listen, some of you guys are dead broke. You do not have money to tithe. I don't care if it's to your church, to the goodwill, whatever it is. Put your oxygen mask on first. Breathe. And then help your family breathe by putting money into the family and then go take care of everyone. So instead of giving 10 or or $100 here, give away a hundred grand. That's how you have massive impact in this community. I'm all about helping people in need, but we got to stop telling people how to do stuff. Then they tell you how to pay your taxes. No, go to a CPA to figure out how to do your taxes. They are not an expert on taxes. If you guys know how to do this right and you set up your LLCs, your C Corps, your S Corps, and you work with a qualified CPA and a bookkeeper, that's where you get your strategies. The coaches, absolutely not. Terrible. And then we talk about investments. You've got to be kidding me. You're going to tell me how to make investments. Suddenly you're a massive stock trader and you know how to do it. Give me a break. Guys, honestly, you could go to S&P 500. You figure out what's proportionate. You know I'm a heavy real estate guy. I like real estate. I love investing in the stock market. If you put your money away for 10-year increments, you will never be dissatisfied. And then they're going to tell you what type of precious metals to own and all this, and then they'll have an affiliate link for you. Guys, make sure your coach, whatever, stays in their lane. Then my best part is they're going to give you a Bible first to tell you how good of a person they are. I mean, I don't care what Bible verse you give me. It doesn't make a difference to me. If you're on here and you want to teach me about wholesaling, let's talk about wholesaling. Let's just become a good person. I don't need the Bible to tell it to me. It's got great lessons. I agree with it. But why do I need your Bible quote to tell me what's good, what's not? Guys, we're in a society where we got to stop deciding, are you this type of religion? Or are you this? Oh, I only do business with it. This is the problem we have in America right now. So why are people bringing in the wholesaling? It drives me nuts. Guys, put your oxygen mask on first. Learn wholesaling. Get money in so you can get caught up on your bills. Get your family taken care of. And then you decide who you want to donate to where you're going to have the most impact. And then if you become a really big superstar... Open up a 501c3, make it public to everyone, show them how they can help out, and that's how you do it. But you have to lead. Too many times people are just telling you what to do. I would never, ever take investment advice from me because I've been investing for a long time and I've struck out plenty. So I'm a hobbyist. I'm still trying to figure it out just like you guys are. So why do people like tell you it's like to really, you have to do it this way. It's a, it's, you gotta be careful. There is a cult-like mentality out there if you don't do it my way, I'm all about the raving fans thing. But like, I respect each and every one of you as an individual. And I would never tell you how to pay your taxes, how to donate your money. And worst of all, how to do investments, especially. And so if I go on a wholesaling show and they talk about other things other than wholesaling, I'm confused. I'm like, what am I watching here? What, what is this about? I don't understand. That's what drives me nuts. So I try not to watch too much other stuff. Okay. So let's talk about the three must. Then we're going to wrap it up and do some questions here. The three must of wholesaling, Rick and Zach. And I say leadership because I'm only going to show you the stuff I do. See, anybody can sit on a pedestal and preach to you. I'm not a preacher. You, you can't be. So the best way you can help people is lead by example. I'm all, anybody who's going to like just walk a mile in a man's shoes, God bless you. Even if it's right or wrong, I'm all for it. But too many people tell you where to go, how to get there, but they're not willing to strap on their shoes. They're not willing to lift those weights and put in the reps. Me and Zach are willing to do it with you. So 
the threes. Number one, you have to condition your sellers to avoid the friend zone. This is non-negotiable. If you don't set this part up, you're going to wind up in the friend zone. What do I mean by like that? Hey, John, I'm going to sit down with you probably like 30, 45 minutes, and I'm going to get to know more about your house and more importantly about you and your family. And you'll have a decision at the end of the make. At, you'll have a decision to make at the end of this conversation. And you decide, hey, I love working with Rick. He's the person to buy my house. Or, hey, Rick, I don't think it's going to work. It's a hard no. Either way, I'm going to help you get the house sold and we'll still part as friends. Can we agree on that yes or no decision? And I look him in the eye and wait for it. Why? Because people do not want to break their own word. But if you do not set up the framework for it, and this is not sales training, guys. This is just education. When they get at the end and go, I don't know, I got to think about it or I got to talk it over with my wife and stuff like that. You can kind of go back and go back to the frame and go, listen, remember John, when we said in the beginning, we're going to make a yes or no decision. We agreed to that, right? Boom. Now it doesn't happen perfectly, but it will eliminate you being in the friend zone. If you don't know what the friend zone is, someone put it in the comments. I was in high school. I know all about the friend zone. Don't ever be the backup prom date. Don't ever be the person that I'm friends with you, but I'm going to date your other friend type of deal. It's no fun. It happens in wholesaling. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or girl. We've all experienced it. Do not. This is my number one strategy to splitting this. Condition your sellers. Next one. Go for no negotiating. Like this is not sales training. I just teach you how to build massive rapport. You have to build a massive rapport. And then you want to get a no on your first offer. Why? Well, Rick, I don't know. I was always taught to get a yes. And that's why you're failing at wholesaling. You see, it's a psychological warfare game. By me making a low offer, I'm making the seller double check their expectations. And I want to see if they're going to come towards me. The problem is every guru out there teaches you how to do your MAO, your maximum allowable offer. And you guys are going for a yes. You think you're realtors because a lot of these gurus tell you to go get your license. That's how you're serious. You got to be kidding me. That's like getting your license does not make you serious a wholesaler. It just, it just checked off a few boxes and you paid a course fee. It doesn't make you serious. It's, if I, listen, if I had to vet out who's a serious wholesaler, show me you did five deals. I know you're serious. Do you think I, so, oh, but this guy got his license. He did one deal. He's serious. He's much more serious. He took the course. You spend three months studying for your little course, pay your fees. I'll spend three months with my person and I will crush you like a bug. The course is not going to help you. Oh, it helps my credibility. No, it makes you more liable. And you have to disclose everyone you're a licensed realtor and you have to put it on all your marketing. Tell me the advantage. Tell me. I'm waiting to hear it. They, they think you're more serious. No, most of the people I deal with don't even want to deal with realtors. Go for no, guys. It saves you from yourself. So if I make an offer and say the, the ARV on the property is 200, so there's problems with it. I offer 110. They go, man, that's crazy. I can't take that offer. It's a no. You're going to tuck your legs between your tails and run backwards. No, you're going to suck it up. You're going to Bruce Lee it and you're going to get a counter from them. And guess what? By the time you're done with the negotiation, you're going to get it done twice as fast with half the amount of stress. Yes, you're going to have butterflies in your stomach. It's going to hurt. Suck up the pain and do it. And when you do that, you're going to get the hard stuff done first. And then you're going to walk away and you're going to sell your contract very easily to a cash buyer because you practiced what Rick and Zach preached. Not what they preach, what they actually do. And I didn't make up this strategy. It's a known sales philosophy forever. It's not sales training. It's just go for no. You should not get a yes on your first offer. If you are, you're a real estate agent and I guarantee you, you overpaid for the property. Test me on this theory. I promise you that's the truth. My last final tip here is your cash buyers, they must prove they, must prove they own two properties through ownership. End of story. You know why? Because everybody's a cash buyer these days. If you guys really want a tool to fix it, go over to X Leads. We have a dispo software. We'll tell you if they own two properties or not. Like I don't even have to play around with it anymore. But at least if, if you're not using something like X Leads or something like that, ask them, go give me two properties you own right now or currently two of them like you've closed on recently. And let's see if you're a real cash buyer. You see, when they do that, it changes a lot of their mentality. Remember, I, I don't typically sell to other wholesalers. There's some that you have to do it, but you got to understand that's what needs to be done on it. So you've got to understand that. So guys, make sure you come over to Zach Discord. Join us on the Discord community. I was on there Friday night. Man, you guys are fast. It's a little wild. 
and there's a lot going on there, but I'm willing to learn new things if it makes me a better wholesaler and I can connect with more of you. And we do something on Friday night, but you can go on there, register on zackdiscord.com. It's 100% free, just how we do everything else. You can check that out.